I've been the pastor here for seven years, six months, seven days, 22 hours. No, I'm just kidding. Um, what, the church started in August uh, of 2006, August the 10th, and Trey Harris's backyard, some of you were there. And, um, the seventh year is an important time in Scripture, if you want to go look there, and some of our Bible scholars can help you find some of that, but it, the seventh year is important, and I, I believe that the seventh year is important to the community fellowship for one of two things, success or failure. And if our faith is weak, we're going to fail. Um, I, I, I battle the numbers thing, and Bruce Elgin can tell you, and right behind him is April Haynes, and she can tell you that um, dollars and cents don't make much sense to me, but I know that God's going to provide. Why he gave us 22 acres in that building over there, and we ain't going to fail unless we trust ourselves. This is a great week for our country. July the, the 4th of 1776 was an incredible day. As those men who signed that Declaration of Independence, you know, they weren't just signing a document that they were proud of. You remember the phrase, John Hancock, you talk about him and how, how big his name was. Do you know why he signed that, that so big? So the king would know where he stood. You know, I, I think one of the things that we celebrate, I know one of the things we celebrate is our independence as a nation. And I'm, I'm glad, I'm proud to be an American and where, where I'm free and I can worship and, and be who I want to be. And when I look back at our founding fathers and those who led our country, they weren't just proud of the independence of the new nation but they were proud of the fact of their dependence upon God. And I, I want to remind you that this, fa this nation and our families and our lives, we better be dependent upon God or thus we fail. So today I want to talk to you about in, uh, learning dependence. As I think about that as a nation, I, I think about those who have served in the military and what if that infantry of Marines or or, or army guys that are on the ground somewhere, what if they all did their own thing? They would not survive. But as a unit, as a team, we survive. Anybody been watching soccer? That's weird stuff, okay? Football is not round. It's, okay. And by the way, like that new team there in Washington, what's their names now? Well, maybe so, maybe not. I'm just kidding. Learning dependence. And, and follow me, if you will, please. Follow me. I, praise God for our independence as a nation, but praise God for our dependence upon God and our dependence upon other people. When I think back across these last uh, weeks or so, Julie and I left here uh, two Sundays ago, and um, we, we went to Miami. We, we got on a cruise ship. Our kids had, had never been on a cruise. Ruth had, but... The rest of the kids had, and it was an incredible time. Ryan, it was good, wasn't it? That boy ate more than I can imagine. I'll tell you, we, we had fun. We found some fun things, and we found some places we like to go together. But it was incredible as a family. You know, we do it at home. We sit around our table and eat together, but we sat together. We played together. We prayed together. The thing that I want to point out to you, and I hope I get through this in the Scripture in a few minutes, is how we must be dependent upon each other because when we are independent, we die. But let me give that to you from a, a man's perspective, a, an adult. And, and Julie, why don't you come sit on the front row so you can hear this and they can all see your beauty as you come down. I, I picked out the new shirt that she's wearing today. Isn't it cute? They actually had my size, but I, I figured I'd be, look like a big peach where she looks like a, a, a little cute little peach, you know. So I bought this one instead, and it makes me look good. I'm just kidding. But one of the things that I, I'm learning um, as a man, the more I do by myself without my family, and the more I hide the things that I don't want anybody else to know about, the more I fail. To cover our sins, or our shame is that we don't we don't allow the mercy and the grace of God to cover our lives. I, I think about um, 
thank you again, Kathy. Thank you for the making uh, our, our time away possible as she answered my calls and took my email, and I tried to stay as unplugged as possible. Thank you, Matthew. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Keith's back there teaching you. Thank you, Keith. Thank you, Cassim and Gordon and, and, and Bruce and, and others who were a part. Thank you for allowing me to be away. Um, the time that I really cherish the most is is the time that I got to connect with somebody who really cares. You know, God cares, and that's that's really where I want to get to in just a minute. But but on the on the cruise from there, we went to Oklahoma. But I really enjoyed being around my kids. Our, our kids are crazy and sweet and all that kind of stuff. They love their phones too much. I wonder where they get that from. Um, Rebecca and Ruth are at the beach with some friends today. And, uh, <laughs> they stay on them too much. But to be able to connect and to look at them, one of the times, I don't know where I am at all. I walked up on Ryan. They were just talking. You know, um, they live. My parents live in a gated community where a lot of old people live. I'm sorry, they just live in one of those. Um, they have a pond, and there's a, a little a bench there. And, and I walked up behind y'all, were looking at the ducks and talking about the water. And just my daddy connected with my son. Isn't that awesome? You know, some of you can't do that because your dads have gone on here. And then uh, Ryan went away, and I, I came up and, and sat with my dad. How incredible. 74, I think he's 74 this year. But I can still connect with my dad. And I'm trying to work on this in my mind. That my dad, like our Heavenly Father, wants so deeply to connect with John, can you go to Isaiah 64, 1, please? He wants so desperately to connect with us. And in, through this scripture, Isaiah 63 and 64, um, Isaiah is confessing the sins of the people of God, the, the uh, Israelites and um, the, the children of God. All different kinds of things are going on there. And, and in this verse, it's echoing back to um, chapter 63 and 64, a couple of places where he says, no matter what, you're still my father. So I'm going to come to this verse in just a second, so I'm just going to leave it there. No matter what happens, you're still my dad. Abba, Father, if you would. There's another verse that talks about that. He is my father, and my dad wants to connect with me and connect to my son, and I want to connect to my kids. And the more that I disconnect, the more I stay to myself and keep my blessings to myself or my thoughts or my dreams to myself, I miss it. We had some car trouble at the beach, and I appreciate Herman Terry trying to fix it with me. And uh, By the way, I did fix my car all by myself. And I hope it stays with me. I did. I, I, I did, and um, it wasn't gas. It was a PCV valve. Okay, okay I thought it was PVC, but it's PCV. I don't know. But I fixed it, um, and it, it cost us a bunch. But one of the things that it, it made us do is we went and looked at cars, and I tried to buy a car, and a lot of y'all don't know I like cars. Yesterday, Ryan and I went and looked at cars. We'd never done that before together. And we didn't buy one, and we probably will sometime. But it was really sweet to be able to do that with him. Because I, I just I want some, some time, some ways to connect with him. Isaiah said out loud, and I... I, I can only imagine as I, I think through this, and I've been listening to some other sermons that some guys preached on this verse, and he said, God, I pray that you would burst from the heavens and come down, and the mountains would quake with your presence. How much do we really want the presence of God in our lives? Hear me today. I, I'm talking about the presence, my presence with my three kids and, and with Julie so, so here, here's my thought. The more that we disconnect from people, the, the weaker we are. 
more we connect to God, the stronger we are. Do we really long for this? Let, let me give you give you one of the thoughts. This is a, there's a guy named Moses. Say Moses. Um, we, we've been reading this book called The Story, which is really a, just a chronological story of the new, of, um, of the Bible. And, and we read through, um, Julie and I did, how Moses was saved. You remember that. Mama put him in a little basket and put him in, in Pharaoh's daughter. Pretty cool. Um, and, and a pretty great connection. And Moses became the leader of God's people. You remember that. Moses went up on the mountain and he spent time with God, brought down the t- Ten Commandments. Um, you know, all, all that kind of stuff. Spent a lot of time with God. But did you notice, and you can go back to Scripture and check this out, did you notice that every time Moses came off the mountain... The people of God were looking for Moses because they wanted to see that Moses had been with God and then hear what did God say. Keep following me, please, okay? I'm not going to go too long today. Um, They longed to hear, what did he say, what did he say, what did he say? And Moses' countenance had changed. You can see that story of the Mount of Transfiguration when Jesus was there and those other guys showed up and, and it was just like filled with glory. It was incredible. And when Moses would come down from the mountain, they would be so enamored and so excited about what what Moses was going to share about their time with God. Here's the point. Why is it do we wait to hear from others who have been with God when we could have been with Jesus? You see, Moses is not the only one who can go up on the mountain and spend time with God. Praise God. When Jesus died on the cross, the veil of the temple, follow me, okay? The veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. We're not talking about a little teensy tiny uh, veil. We're talking about a huge thing that really kept people from the presence of God. You and I can experience His presence. And you know what God longs for? Us! Boy, this is disconnected today. When Adam and Eve took that that, that bite of whatever that fruit was in, in the garden, by the way, who took the first bite? It was whose fault? Oh, no, it was man's fault. It had to be. I can't figure out why. But, but after they both took that bite and they, they realized they were naked, okay? Naked means you're unclothed and up to something. Naked means you just only got nothing on. Um, they were naked and they hid themselves. Who came looking for them? God. Why? He wanted. God loves you and wants some time. Oh, oh, that God would burst from the heavens every morning and meet us at our coffee table or our bedside. There's a couple things that I'm going to take away from this week or weeks. One is, my kids are going to know they're prayed for. They've never been prayed for. And they're going to know that I love them. And the thing that I, I said this before, and I'm going to kind of bring this to a close, is um, when we don't go to bed at the same time, when we don't have good conversations, this is my wife, Julie, told me, when we don't do that kind of thing, we get disconnected. The same is true with my relationship with Jesus. The less time I spend with Him, the more time I spend taking care of this. And this matters. Let me just see if I can find. Why don't we read Isaiah chapter 64, beginning in verse number 1, and we'll go on from there, okay? Will you stand with me? And, uh, we'll just grab a, a little bit of this, okay? Are you all okay? Mm-hmm. Some of you are. Okay. God is good? And all the time. Isaiah chapter 64. Um, many of you have been praying for this diabetes thing. Keep, keep praying. We'll see what God does. Isaiah 64, verse number 1. Oh, that you would burst from the heavens and come down. How the mountains would quake in your presence. And fire, as fire consumes wood to burn and water to boil, your coming would make the nations tremble. And then your enemies would learn the reason for your fame. And when you came down long ago, you did awesome deeds beyond our highest expectations. And oh, how the mountains quaked. For since the world began... No ear has heard, no eye has seen a God like you who works for those who wait for Him. You welcome those who gladly do good, who follow godly ways. 
but you have been very angry with us, for we are not godly. We are constant sinners. How can people like us be saved? Verse 6. We are all infected and impure with sin. When we display our righteous deeds, they are nothing but filthy rags. Like autumn leaves, we wither and fall, and our sins swept Our sins sweep us away like the wind. Yet no one calls on your name or pleads with you for mercy. Therefore, we have turned away from us. You have turned away from us and turned us over to our sins. And yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the Father. You are the Father. We are formed by your hand. Don't be angry with us. Please don't remember our sins. Look at us as we pray and see that we are your people. Father, I ask in the next few minutes that you just speak to our hearts and turn us us back to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Sean, point number two. Okay. <clears throat> so here, here's the here's the thoughts. Um, not, number one, we need to cherish our relationship with God. Would you agree with that? Say amen. We need to cherish our relationship with others that are around us as well. And, and, and those cool people, many of you I've known for a long time. Some of you I've not known very long. But we need to cherish the relationships that God has given us. And he talks about the relationship with, with father, our father with child. And this relationship from, from people to God the Father is a unique relationship. You would agree with that, right? There's no one like him. No one's ever seen him before. No one understands all that he can do. In fact, if you were really honest, and if I'm really honest today, we limit God, don't we? We, we don't believe that he can heal cancer fully. We, we, sometimes we don't believe that he can give us the answers. In fact, I believe that God can give us any of the answers that we want. But the relationship with Father, it's a unique relationship, but also it's an important relationship. I, I went to a fatherhood event several weeks ago before we left town, and I heard some t- statistics about... Um, Home, single, um, single parent homes, really, where there's only a mom in the house. H- have you read some of those statistics about how much more likely those children are to end up in prison or dead? Oh. And it's not because we dads are that important. Yeah, it is. Because we are to be the example of who God is in the lives of our children. Are you with me? Do you see the example, what I share with you about my son sitting next to my dad? It's really not the picture of a grandpa and a son, which is really a cool picture to see, but it's a picture of the father saying, that's my son, you're my son, I love you, and let me pour into your life just a little bit. My dad and I sat on that same bench, and I was able to say something to my dad that, man, he should have hit me between the teeth because I told him something he was doing that I feel like is totally wrong. But you know what? When you and I can get so close to God or so close to that person in our lives and we can be honest with them, do you know what happens? We get stronger. Whether I'm right or wrong, it doesn't matter. But I'm able to say what I need to say and He's able to say what He needs to say. And the more I hear God's voice, in this is a, this is an important relationship. In, in Romans chapter 8, verse number 15, So you have not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you have received God's spirit when He adopted you as His own sons or His own children. Now we call Him Abba, Father. It says here we are clay. I love that picture of the potter and the clay and, and what's that about. But then here's the, the last part of this. Um, here's what happens in verse number 8 and and verse number 9 he says God will you please not remember our sin aren't you glad that God's forgiven our sin so here's the incredible part of this Rebecca, Ruth and Ryan are my children what can Rebecca, Ruth and Ryan do to make me not their daddy and then not my kids nothing that's the Greek word Here's the deal. I have a choice. I can pour into them or I can pour into anything else. My choice. You know what? God's choice is to pour into me and to pour into you. Are we enjoying that? Verse number one. Oh, that you would burst from the heavens. Do we really expect God to show up when we pray? I, I, I mean... 
Are we expecting God to do something? You know, I, I've seen God do this. This is the seventh year, count them, the seventh year we've done back to school. And we're going to see God do incredible things. And are we going to see him do better things than he's done in the past? Yeah. Are we going to see him do things he's done in the past again? Yeah. But here's the deal. Are we really expecting him to do things that we've never seen before? There are too many of us that are not expecting things from God. In fact, we're really expecting more of a handout. He, he does. He gives us good things. That's not the God we need to say. He's the God who says, no matter what, I love you. If you just come stand by me. This, this scripture I just read to you, it says, those that are godly are those who do the right thing, and blessings come. But his anger is turned toward those who do un- who do ba- bad things. So let me give you a picture here. First of all, sin is, is uh, what we do that breaks God's standards, right? Also, sin is anything we do without the blessing or the presence of God in it. That, that's a big deal. Because it says here, even, even our good deeds are as filthy rags. Now, you can go and, and find out some, some thoughts of what that means. But he, here's the deal. Without the presence of God, without being dependent upon God, we're in trouble. I don't know what kind of sermon you expected, but Say I come back, this is what you're getting. Because I believe that Jesus wants us to be so connected to the Father, so dependent on the Father, that we don't know if we're going to have our next breath unless He shows up. My prayer for the community fellowship is that God so shows up that the world can't do anything but save you. But it's not going to start. Question. Do we want him or do we want something else? Lord Jesus, I come to you today and I thank you. We thank you for your presence. We are not alone. You told us that you'd never leave us, you'd never forsake us. God, I understand that means you'll never leave me alone. Sometimes I like to be by myself. I like to be alone. But Father, that's not what you asked me to do. You ask us to spend time with you and to trust you. Oh, there are some people in this room that, and they have to trust you every day because of what they do because their jobs are so critical and difficult. God, thank you for the protection and for the life and for being beside us and with us all the time. Jesus, I pray that you would turn us as moms and dads, as grandpas and grandmas, as aunts and uncles, as friends, back to others. Father, I pray that you change our lives. Jesus, for that person or people that are here today that have never been saved, that have never met you, I pray that today is that day. I ask that in Jesus' name. You look right here. Um, is Mia out here? Is she in the here? There's a little girl named Mia. I heard Russ earlier. He was expanding the microphone like any good granddaddy would. He said, hey, Mia, hey. He and Michelle have taken, started taking care of their granddaughter. You know why? Because that's what a good granddaddy is. You know we serve a God who holds us and is ready to hold you right where you are today. Be dependent upon Him. Will you stand with me? We'll take our, our time of invitation here today. and um, Julie and I are going to stand here at the front. I'm not going to ask anybody else to come down and Maybe if you want to come pray with somebody, you can. But I want to ask you, couples and dads and moms, to become more dependent upon Jesus. If He's speaking to you today, 
sit where you are, come kneel at this step, and spend some time with Jesus. Oh, that we would be so dependent upon Him that we would cry out, God, would you please burst from the heavens and give us your presence. We're going to sing here. You come and do business with Jesus. Thank <laughs> you.